Welcome everybody. I hope you can hear me if there's anybody out there. Right now there's currently nobody watching. It's so alone. I'm so lonely. All right, so I just wanted to do a quick video. I had uh, made a comment earlier this week about uh, e-collars and blah, 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 blah. So I've just been uh, really thinking about it. I just feel like the tool's been so talked about and all these different things. So um, this is Rocco. Rocco, get off me. Thanks, dude. Um, so just two quick things. I'm actually in the middle of writing an article about it. I want to get way more in depth. But uh, the two things I just wanted to talk about for my big no-nos, um, and I want to thank Michael Ellis. Um, I spent uh, a few years working with him, and the guy is just a genius when it comes to things like this. Uh, I understood the concept. Like he says this a lot. You, you understand the concept, and then until you actually start to do it, um, or, so, or something clicks, and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, that's what they meant. Um, and for me it was, I learned a lot about it. Uh, the, the tool and then I started to um, spend time with Michael and started to learn more about um, the intricacies oh my god terrible word don't say a word that you can't pronounce um, of layering of, of stimulus and, imp and inputs to the dog so um, it really changed everything um, I don't very very uh, infrequently uh, use e-collars I don't really um, there's things that I use them for personally that um, I'm not going to share here because it's way more in depth but um, I definitely use them for things that I think a lot of other people don't use them for um, about how to you know gain power back in situations and different things that way but um, my two big O-nos that I learned from Michael Ellis number one is a term called overshadowing I see so many people using this term uh, inappropriately overshadowing Overshadowing is giving multiple inputs at the same time. So what I see a lot of is, come on, come on, come on, come on, sit, sit. That's the definition of overshadowing, giving multiple, in this case, two, actually three uh, physical, um, verbal, physical, and uh, two physicals, the e-collar and the physical, maybe if I'm moving a, with a gesture, and then also the verbal. So if I'm giving the dog three inputs at one time, how do I know what they're responding to? You don't, because all the terms are overshadowing, all the inputs are overshadowing each other. So if I say sit and make the hand gesture at the same time, if I'm luring a sit, and I say sit and make the hand gesture at the same time, sit, make the hand gesture. One time I say sit, my dog's gonna look at me like I'm crazy. What, what, what do you mean? Sit is sit, and a hand gesture, right? What we have to really understand is how you're layering these inputs. So if I'm saying, let's go, the dog doesn't respond, then I need something in the environment to trigger a motivation, to try to do something. So if you're giving input at the same time, you're gonna have a problem long-term. So if you hand the, the collar back to your clients and they say, let's go, and they push the button or they push the button and say, let's go, you're gonna have a nightmare. Um, one of the best um, examples I learned from this is in horse training. I spent some time with my friend Alex uh, in Montana. I wrote an article on my website about uh, Alex and that experience it just <clears throat> blew my mind. Um, but, you know, Alex um, doesn't quite call it this, but it's the same concept of the good deal and the bad deal. The good deal is I offer some type of input. If you don't respond, there's a bad deal, a consequence that's um, connected to that. And the consequence isn't always, isn't always bad. The consequence is when I made the first move, you decided to move. Consequence, perfect, we're on the same path. So overshadowing, please do not overshadow. It's a, a huge, huge disservice to your animals. Um, give them specific inputs, give them a chance to make a good decision on a good deal, and then if not, then we need to follow through with a bad deal and show them that, no, we had to do this. Um, I'm getting into photography, and what I'm learning is that is a terrible, terrible shadow on my forehead. So I'm gonna see if I move. Let me see. That could probably get distracted. Oh my God, it's even worse there. How's that? We'll try that. Um, second one, teach skills away from the tool. I've seen so many trainers teach the dog the, at the same t teach a skill like sit, down, come, um, at the same time when they're teaching the pressure. There's a study that's been done um, 
I, I, I don't remember exact. I've, I've heard Michael quote it millions of times, but I can't remember the exact scientist or where it took place, um, where they gave people a test. And when they got questions wrong, they were stimulated. They had no idea why they were getting stimulated. Another group took the tests. When they got it wrong, they got the stimulation. What they were doing is they were measuring the, the, the blood chemistry to see which one was more stressful. If you could control the outcome or if the outcome was a surprise. Ah, why did I get shocked? If I know why I'm getting in trouble, it makes it way easier to take the, to the getting in trouble. So if I'm pulling down on a dog at the same time teaching them down, that's, that's a lot. They're learning a new skill and they're learning what pressure is at the same time. That's too much. It's too much, right? Take your time. If you think down is so important, then teach down separately motivationally in a way that the dog wants and enjoys the activity. Then if you decide for some reason you're in obedience training or you're in a sport and you need to reinforce your down with something, then teach the pressure away from it and then bring them together so it's fair. So if I know down and I know pressure, if I refuse to down and I get pressure, it'll be very clear why, which they proved in that study. If I know how, I, if I know I'm the cause of it, then it's much easier to take the stress from it. So I'm going to get into a lot more um, in, in depth into the article. I will absolutely not be talking about Michael Ellis's strategy. Michael Ellis has amazing DVDs. He has online classes. He has a school in uh, Northern California. So if you want to learn about um, his way of using the e-collar, um, which is, uh, in my opinion, very obedience-based, very um, uh, done with precision. Um, it's very thought out for the handler and for, uh, for the dog. It's fair to everyone. I think it's, um, it can be a great strategy for you. Um, if, uh, for me, there's really two ways to use the e-collar. Again, this is kind of what I'm going into my article. You know, you're using it for obedience, for reinforcement, for do something or not do something. Um, or for me, um, I use it more like my friend Alex uses the flag where, um, I'm asking the dog, here's your good deal, follow me, or something in that, so I don't use it this way, but if I was, then I would use it as an environmental disruptor to create motivation, right? So in my mind, what happens is the dog or the animal, whatever the animal is, the connection gets lost. So I'm doing something they get, I have to force something there to say, hey, right? They use the flag. They make the flag, the horse responds, the pressure shuts off. Right? They learn to, to pay attention to the nuances of when's the good deal? Oh, their flag, the, the arm went up, so I should be moving that way. They move. Now it's very, very clear. If, they were, if my friend Alex was to raise the, leash, uh, raise the uh, lead rope and then make the flag at the same time, well, now the, dog is st or the horse is stuck. I didn't even get a chance to make the good deal. I didn't even get a chance to do it right. So two big errors. Please do not practice overshadowing and please do not teach a new skill and pressure at the same time. It is very, very stressful. So if you're going to teach a skill, teach it. If you're going to teach pressure, um, you know, Michael has a video all on leash pressure, teaching pressure away from any skill, right? Not away from sit, away from down. Um, so, you know, it, there's a lot, you know, there's two different worlds kind of there, the obedience, precision kind of world. And then there's the, you know, I want my dog to be social type of world. So um, the execution of the tool might be a little bit different, but the theory behind it, giving input at the same time, teaching strategies, um, putting things together, that's, it, it's huge, huge. Um, so... I don't know if anybody uh, has any questions or anything. Let's see. Comments, questions. Oh, I can't write a comment. How do you do these things? I guess when you're in this mode, you can't do it. Hmm. But anyway, so uh, that's it. Look forward uh, to sharing this article with you because it's something I've been really just thinking a lot about because I see... Um, I see, you know, people use e-collars more than ever now. It's like the go-to thing. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But, I mean, I see whole groups based on, you know, one tool. I've never seen, like, a pinch collar group or, a, you know. Um, I really wish there was, like, a dog language group. 
because that's ultimately what we really have to learn. You know, we don't need to learn about tools and all these things. We need to learn about, you know, what dogs are saying um, and responding that way. So everybody, thank you so much. Anybody that sent me a wonderful heartfelt messages about my podcast, I cannot tell you um, how much that meant to me because like I absolutely was scared to death uh, editing the software, coming up with the questions. <sighs> It's scary for me. I don't know. For some people, they're like, yay. Um, but for me, it was really scary. So everybody that um, took the time to say thank you or um, I just, I, I really appreciate um, all those kind words. And uh, that's it. If there's anything anybody needs from me, you can reach me at balancedogsllc.com. And uh, I have all kinds of ways to get in contact. Have a wonderful weekend. Talk to you guys soon.